So welcome everyone um, and happy Arbor Day. Um, my name is Piper and I'm an intern at the Canal Forest Restoration Project uh, at the Rice Creek Field Station. And the co-presenter, um, my co-presenter Kristen Haynes is the assistant director of the Rice Creek Field Station and is my supervisor for the Canal Forest uh, Restoration Project. And um, just as a reminder, um, hopefully everyone to please keep themselves muted um, during the presentation. And now I will give it away to um, Dee Canty and David Victim um, from the Sustainability Office at SUNY Oswego. And they will be um, telling us about their, the Maple Project going on um, right here at SUNY Oswego. Uh, thank you. Um, so our presentation is called Made in Oswego, the Tree Tapping Chronicles of the Office of Sustainability uh, by me, Dee, and David here. Okay. So to start off, um, we just wanted to give you guys a little background of what this project was. Um, the Office of Sustainability interns were dedicated to being leaders on the campus and sharing simple ways to be more sustainable throughout the campus. We carry out tons of fun projects and activities around campus that allow students and staff to learn about some more sustainable practices. One way that our office thought to be more sustainable on campus was to produce our own maple syrup. It seemed like a fun, fun little project to do. Uh, right in our backyard, we have sugar maple trees and we thought what better way to try it out than to try it out. <laughs> So um, before we get started, we just, we can go to the next slide, yeah. We just wanted to uh, show a little tutorial that basically showed our process and how we did it um, versus, well, not versus, but just to, you know, give an idea of what we did. From tree tap to tabletop. Everyone can a hear A tutorial that? presented by the Office of Sustainability. Thank you. The tree tapping process that we experience is very DIY friendly, and we hope that this project will encourage others to go out and try for themselves at home. To complete this process, you'll need a few tools. The tools we use are a cordless power drill with a half inch drill bit, a rubber mallet or a light hammer, a stainless steel spile, a steel bucket to collect the sap, a food grade plastic bucket to transport the sap, and bungee cable. The first step to tree tapping is figuring out the tree that you'll be working with. Identifying the type of tree is key to getting the sap necessary for syrup production. For our process, we use sugar maple trees. Sugar maples can be identified by the grooves in the bark, which can have deep rips or valleys between each plate, or by the smooth edges and U-shaped clefts in their leaves. After you've picked out your tree, it's time to find a sweet spot. The goal here was to find the most effective spot on the tree that would allow us to collect enough sap to water. We decided to pick the southern facing side of the sugar maples because it provides the most sunlight throughout the day and warms the sap when it's cold out. When drilling, you want to begin at a slight angle to allow for the sap to flow freely through the spot. To drill the holes in the sugar maples, we use the half inch drill bit. You don't want to drill too deep into the tree or too shallow from the face of the bark. For this reason, we placed a piece of painted tape two inches from the tip of the drill bit. For our sap collection, we used stainless steel spiles that fit right into the tree opening. Place the narrow end of your spile into the tree and gently twist it into a fixed position. The buckets we used were made for sap collection. They have holes near the rim for hooking onto the spile. Place the hole of the bucket over the spile hook and make sure that it is placed in a firm, upright position to avoid any spill. Once the bucket is in place, we place the covering over the top to avoid any unwanted contaminants falling into the bucket during sap collection. Actively monitoring the collection buckets is a necessary process to ensure that we got as much sap for boiling as possible. Sugar maple sap is 98% water and about 2% sugar, which means that boiling down into syrup is going to take about 4 hours for every 5 gallons. We decided to outsource the syrup making process for quality purposes. Once you've collected and stored your sap in the freezer, begin boiling the sap down until it's reached a dark caramel brown. With the help from the auxiliary dining services staff at Little Page, we boiled about 40 gallons of sap into one gallon of maple syrup. Now that you've gone to each step, it's time to indulge in a nice French toast and ice cream brunch. 
Our wonderful chefs, Dee, John, and Kate, help the auxiliary service staff serve French toast and syrup at Little Page Dining Hall for brunch. The best part of hard work is getting to enjoy it with others, making this project a true success story for the Office of Sustainability. All right, that was our little video tutorial. From tree tab to table. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> Uh, I think you did. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right, so now we want to talk about um, kind of what we learned and how we process it and how we kind of can talk to others about it. So what is maple tapping? Uh, maple tapping is a fun, easy way to create a natural sweetener. Um, this is a perfect activity for a late winter, which is typically like February, going into early spring, which is around March. Um, temperature wise, you're looking for a daytime average temperatures would be above freezing and nighttime temperatures to be below freezing. Uh, tree tapping is a process of collecting sap from trees through an opening in the trunk, like the hole we showed you in the video. Um, the flow of sap is influenced by the pressure changes in the tree. As the sap freezes and melts, it creates the ideal conditions for sap to flow more freely. So, there we go. So the types of trees that we tapped were sugar maple trees. So when you're tapping for syrup, you should be tapping maple trees. The trees, uh, that are most commonly found upstate New York. Uh, a good way to identify the perfect maple tree is by checking the bark. We knew that there were sugar maple trees uh, because we had a uh, manual that basically detailed the inventory of the trees throughout the campus. That was provided to us by an outsourced contractor, which was very convenient because we were able to just find the trees and get going. Um, so for these type of trees, you want to look for bark that is grayish, brownish, and furred. Uh, they'll have deep rifts or valleys between the plates of the bark, so like you can peel it off vertically. And then once you've found your tree to tap, look for a good placement for your tapping. Uh, you want to be sure that you drill where light hits where the light hits the tree the most. During this time of the year, it can be cold, which is not the best for tapping since the sap can freeze. Facing the sun can help warm the sap up enough to drip into your bucket. And here are some fun tree facts about our campus at SUNY Oswego. Um, at SUNY Oswego, we approximately have uh, 1,300 trees across campus. Uh, we completed a tree inventory, which cataloged over 1,400 trees on our main campus. Um, within the trees that we have on our campus, we have 152 different types. Sugar maples make up four, I mean 5.4% of the total trees that have been cataloged. And here's a map of our section behind our office. And the highlighted ones are all sugar maple trees. We did not uh, tap all of them because this is our first project. We wanted to make sure we did everything correctly and didn't um, exploit the trees. So we only tapped seven of these in total. Okay. So what supplies did we use? Um, as you saw in the video, we used a drill to drill a shallow hole into the tree. We used spiles uh, to help transport the sap from the tree. Uh, you got to make sure that they're in firm because you don't want any excess uh, shavings or any bugs to get into the spile. Uh, the bucket attaches to the spile in order to collect the sap dripping out. And the lid, you don't need a lid, but it is very recommended, you know, to keep the bugs, the bark, and any unwanted contaminants out. And a hammer is also optional. A mallet is preferred, a rubber mallet, just so that it doesn't damage the spile when you're tapping it and bungee cords. Uh, we have a lot of wind at Oswego, so using the bungee cords uh, really helped this project go a lot smoother. And what did we observe? Um, our office, with all the spiles and buckets, we had a set schedule um, to check the progress of the staff collection. Uh, our, usually our office typically open from Monday to Friday from nine to five, but we did have some interns and our supervisor come in on the weekends just to check on the tap um, at least once a day from Saturday to Sunday. Um, in order to make sure nothing happened to our buckets, um, such as wind kind of um, spilling our buckets like on the ground or um, any contamination within the bucket, um, we make sure to check them twice a day on weekdays, once in the morning or at 9 a.m. when our office opened, and once again in the afternoon around 5 p.m. And on weekends, as we said, we check them once a day around like 3 p.m. When the buckets would start to get full, we would pour this out into a different bucket, larger buckets, uh, which was collected by our wonderful team of auxiliary services, um, our dining services. Uh, to freeze and store it for us. So um, this was for an overall, I'd say a smooth process, but we did face some challenges. Um, the town of Oswego is notorious for being super windy, especially in the winter. 
since the perfect time for tree tapping is usually late winter, early spring, the winds are still relatively high in the area. Uh, there were some days on the first week when we realized that our buckets were falling because of the winds from the night before. And a big challenge that we had to face was how do we keep the buckets from falling throughout the night? So the option that we deemed most successful was to wrap uh, elastic bungee cords around the bucket and the tree that helped secure the buckets onto the tree. After this approach, we had no more issues with the wind interfering with the tapping because the buckets were tightly in place. Uh, so with our tree sap collection, um, a little bit some more hard facts about it. Um, our office had the goal of collecting 60 gallons over a three week period and we started from February 26th um, to March 19th. Uh, 40 gallons uh, that was collected was dedicated to boiling into a serve to distribute across dining halls across campus for um, brunch on the weekend. And 20 gallons was dedicated to um, making a type of simple syrup or liquid sugar type of thing, uh, which is used to help make uh, maple tea, which we did serve, which we'll talk about later. Um, during our collection process, our office wanted to be sustainable and reuse buckets to store the syrup instead of purchasing new buckets. Um, but there was some difficulties there. Um, with the buckets that we collected, a lot of them were different shapes and sizes. So um, it was kind of hard to keep track of how much we collected in total for the sap. And also some of the buckets that we used were pickle buckets. So if any of you have any tips of how to get rid of the pickle smell um, in certain buckets, please let us know. It'd be greatly appreciated. Okay. Uh, next up was the boiling process after we collected all the sap. Uh, so we worked with the auxiliary service to help store and boil the sap down into syrup. The sap was stored in buckets and frozen until we were ready to start the uh, boiling process. A few of our interns met with Matt, who was one of the chefs at the Little Hall, Little Page Dining Hall <laughs> to help teach us about the boiling process. So overall, we boiled about 40 gallons of sugar maple sap into a little over a gallon of maple syrup that we were able to serve for brunch on Saturday. And we had brunch at Little Page that day. Um, some of the interns from our Office of Sustainability had a, the wonderful opportunity of being able to make the French toast and serve our maple syrup to the Little Page Dining Hall across, um, on our campus. Um, so off our, our menu, we had French toast, which was made by our lovely intern, John. Uh, we had maple syrup to serve on top and vanilla ice cream. And for the simple syrup that we made, we infused that into a tea and made a maple tea. It was a beautiful plate, as you guys can see, that a lot of the students got to enjoy and also the faculty as well. We enjoyed explaining how it was all done locally too. So overall, I say this was a big success. <laughs> uh, along with some positive reviews from both students, uh, staff, faculty from Little Page Dining Hall, it is also a surprise review from a food review page here at Oswego. Uh, there's a fun little account run by a student on campus who uh, remains anonymous, uh, but they rate the food in the dining halls and we so happen to find out that we were featured. Um, so it was nice to see that other students and, you know, staff wanted to share positive reviews of our syrup and we got a 10 out of 10 rating. So that was pretty nice. It was good to note that in the review, they um, also made a point to explain to others that saw this post that um, we explained that everything was made locally and we got a 10 out of 10. Um, so what did we succeed in? Um, over the three week period that we collected um, sap from our sugar trees, we collected over 60 gallons of maple syrup. And our first time trying to tap maple trees on our own, we did a wonderful job of checking the sap collection, making sure it was a very smooth process. Um, the only difficulty we really, really ran into was the bucket smell of the pickles and of uh, the wind issue, but we were able to overcome those challenges very quickly um, by thinking on our feet and uh, adjusting very swiftly. For next year, we plan to expand this project um, to the rest of the dining halls on campus for more students to enjoy. Um, and today it's a little bit windy, so our plans of planting some trees today were canceled. But by next week, we plan on uh, ending Earth Month by planting five sugar maple trees on campus that can be used to tap in the future. So uh, we just want to thank everyone for taking the time out to listen to our story and uh, watch our presentation. Uh, we hope that this can help everyone else enjoy and learn how to do some maple tapping of your own at home. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if any of you have any questions for us about our process, uh, what we did, um, 
anything yeah. like that, please let us know. Um, could you? Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for that presentation. It was really interesting. Um, uh, one question I have is, you know, you, you said you, you want to expand this to the other dining hall. So like, do you have any other kind of details worked out for what next year might look like? Like how you might want to expand this? Do you, do you want to do any of the boiling yourselves or still outsource that? Or just, just in general, other plans for next year? Um, so for next year, this was our first time trying this. So um, like I said, we didn't want to exploit any of the trees. But now that we kind of have an understanding of what we're doing, um, I think the plan would be to tap some more trees and get some more served because we were only able to have enough to serve to one dining hall this year. But um, hopefully next year we can serve to all the dining halls across campus and learn a little bit more about the boiling process. So maybe one day there is a possibility we can boil it ourselves. Yeah. But for, you know, the near future, I think we're going to continue to work with auxiliary services because um, that was pretty, that was a pretty delightful experience. Uh, we got to collaborate with them. And also, um, considering the amount of syrup that we actually had to collect, those buckets are really heavy. So for the boiling down into syrup, I think uh, it's better to leave it to people like Matt who really know what they're doing with that. <laughs> And also, like uh, David said, uh, it's a good way to collaborate across yeah. campus. Uh, one of our goals our office made is to make sure we kind of incorporate it with everybody across campus. Um, a lot of people have a certain idea about sustainability being just kind of hugging trees and calling a day, but we're much more than that. Um, our office has done a great job of other projects, including this one of incorporating other groups across campus. So we want to continue to do that. I know that the sustainability office was just having like they're trying to ban like single use plastics and everything um, on campus. So I was just wondering, like, like, I think that uh, overall, like there could be some really like impressive feats that the sustainability office should be very proud of. Um, obviously, these things like take time. But do you think eventually, like, if we like ban single use plastics and then like, do you think of eventually like I guess do you guys think you have the capability in the future with more trees and stuff to like supply like be the sole supplier of maple syrup and at SUNY Oswego like do you think it would be possible I guess um so <laughs> considering uh the amount of students that are at Oswego I don't think that um that would be something that we would be able to actually accomplish only because like I, like we said, it takes about five gallons to get one gallon of syrup, um, essentially. Or, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it takes six, sorry, sorry. 40, 40 gallons to get one gallon. <laughs> it takes five hours to boil down a gallon. That's what I meant to say, sorry. <laughs> and we but, served um, most of it um, in the dining hall that one day. Um, yeah. It would be a goal to like try to um, do this once a year and try to serve to more dining halls across campus, uh, possibly a little bit more, maybe instead of doing it on one day, we can stretch across like a weekend. So it'd be served on Saturday brunch and on Sunday. Um, it would love if there would be a possibility um, in the near future. Um, I'm not sure how, how much we can expand this project because it would end up kind of being a little factory at that point. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you never know, maybe there's some hope for that. Oh, there's something in the chat. I just want to check. Um, do you test the sugar content of the gear staff? So we did. Um, we did not actually get um any exact numbers. Um, so like we didn't get any exact ratios of water to sugar. Um, besides the assumed ratios of ninety eight percent water to two percent sugar, but um, what another one of our interns, John, he basically took them and boiled down some of the sap that was left over and we were able to enjoy them in like little mason jars so most of the syrup um was pretty sweet well most of the sap was pretty sweet when it came out and that was only about i'd say not even 50 percent um boiled so the sugar content was definitely there but there was definitely a lot more water <laughs> Like it came when it came out of the uh, spile, it was pretty much just water with like a hint of sugar in it. Let's 
to you to say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, that was a great presentation. I have special love for those trees because my office in Culkin Hall looks down over that grove. And, you know, in times when I'm in the office, I can see birds flitting back and forth between the maples. Um, I have a question though, and it may be something that Kate knows something about. There's a capital project that is underway now to refurbish the whole area around Hewitt from the quad to the south side where those maples are. And I've been worried throughout this that as part of that project that they're going to take those maples out. And I'm wondering if, if you know anything about the future of those trees. Um, we can probably have Kate speak up a little bit more about um, that project, but um, one thing that we can say is that our we really want to protect those trees, and this was a perfect timing to kind of um, show that those trees are important, that they can be used, they're not just trees that are just sitting there. Um, so if there, if there is any call of action to eliminate those trees, we can have a way to defend them by saying, like, well, one, they're good for nature, I mean, they're good for oxygen and everything like that, but also they can be utilized to um, benefit the campus in a way. Kate, I don't know if you want to add anything extra to that. Yeah, just a kind of quick thing to say. I know uh, in the new plans for Hewitt, every intention is to maintain those trees as they are and do everything that we can to protect those. Uh, so there's no plans whatsoever to remove those trees per in particular. Um, so I hope you find some solace in that, Paul. Thank you. I, uh, I have another question. Well, I have a, actually a few questions, but I'll, I'll try to package these together. So um, one, did you end up with any kind of like pickle flavor that was detectable in the end product? And could that almost be like a specialty product for you guys? Um, and two is about the tea. And it was, was maple, maple sap, was that the only ingredient in the tea or did you, um, did you like use the, the partially boiled sap and then steep tea in it? Oh, okay. yeah. So the for the tea, um, we would we just use breakfast tea and use the sap as a sweetener because it was once you boil the sap down, it is very sweet. Um, and as for the first question, the pickles. Um, yeah, there was there, no pickle. <laughs> yeah, there was like a there was a hint of pickle aroma. Like it was like a lot. Like if you wafted the buckets while they were empty, you could definitely know. Um, besides the big pickle signs on the on the side of the bucket, that they were pickle jars. But we cleaned them really well yeah. as much as we could. We tried every tip that we found online just to really get that pickle smell out of there. So luckily, there's no like pickle taste, taste yeah, in no the taste. syrup. <laughs> um, but as for the tea, uh, it was kind of if you had like black Lipton tea and you had some like a little bit of like maple syrup to it. So it was really good. Hope that answers your question. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Oh, and I realized I have one more and then I'll, I'll be quiet and let other people ask questions. But um, I, I've seen a, like some photos of industrial scale systems for um, turning sap into syrup with like reverse osmosis and giant boilers. And I was wondering, like, what, what did auxiliary services use to boil the sap? Like, it, it looked like a really interesting contraption that the chef was standing by. Uh, so the the chef that um did boil down the syrup, Matt, he actually does this. Um, I wouldn't. I guess in his free time, um, he at home, he does have a lot of syrup production going on. So we thought, you know, reaching out to him to get this done, uh, would be very useful. Um, the tools that he used, um, to get everything in. Uh, we're not exactly too sure of like the, the actual like names yeah. and stuff of everything, but basically um, we just boiled it down and then he had uh, designated syrup uh, content measures that basically, I guess, like measured 
Yeah. Um, to make sure it's down. It was. Yeah. yeah to, just to, to make, make sure it was like more of a syrup kind of consistency or a type of grade. I know there's different types of grades of syrup. Um, but it's something that is able to, that you are able to do at home, just kind of just sit some stuff to boil and you just wait a few hours and eventually you will have syrup. But there are some extra tools just to um, ensure certain things, the type of grade and how sweet and stuff like that. Um, that's some information that. Yeah. Like the sharing. cheesecloth to get any uh, solid materials out of the sap that you don't want or anything that has been, you know, like dissolved in there that might have uh, solidified and you want to just grab that out of there. Um, but for the most part, um, we froze the buckets of sap as soon as we were able to collect them and drop them off, just so that we could avoid um, anything growing, like any bacteria that likes to thrive in that environment, um, any solid material that might also, you know, have bacteria on it. So we just froze everything um, until it was time to boil. So it just went straight from freeze, thaw to boil. Thank you. Thank you, Kate, for answering that. <laughs> Kate stuck something in the chat, which I'll say for the sake of the recording, that auxiliary services used a steam jacketed kettle. Very interesting. <laughs> Do we have uh, any other questions for our presenters? All right. Uh, well, we want to thank everyone for uh, taking the time out to listen again. Um, yes, thank you. Know, Hope you guys were able to learn something. And um, if you happen to find a sugar maple in your backyard next year, uh, tapping season, you you can able you were able to tap it yourself and hopefully make your own a little bit of syrup. Yeah, thank you both so much. And we'll leave everyone with this uh, this this message from Paul about maybe uh, maybe pickle juice could be used to create switchel, an old time New England farmer's summer drink that usually used maple syrup and and cider vinegar. <laughs> so something to think about for next year, making switch a lot of uh, the pickle juice. <laughs>